Y'all know what's going on. It's time for another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker. Check this out, y'all. Uh, some people, they ain't got no business becoming parents. None whatsoever, right? And in this, in this episode, I'm going to share a story with you about a young man that wanted to have a relationship with his father so bad that uh, he was blinded to, you know, the real person that his father is or was, for, for that matter. Let me say it like that, right? But his mom, she tried to let him know, you know what I'm saying, what type of uh, parent his father was and how he was always about himself. But after the son got to a certain age, she decided to let him find out for himself what was really going on with his pops. And, you know, to this day, she regrets that decision, right? But anyway, look, I'm going to get into this story. I mean, y'all need to sit back and listen to this one, right? This is one where you might want to listen to it twice because it's a lot of lessons in it when it comes to, you know, a woman's intuition and, and going with your gut and, uh, you know, really understanding that some people, no matter uh, who they are, no matter if they are a parent, they're going to be out for themselves. It's just what it is in some cases, right? But this is going to be a good one, y'all. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. All right, let's get to it, y'all. Let me uh, start off by saying this, right? The father in this story, he goes into prison. You know, he's in his late 20s, right? He and uh, the girl he was with, uh, they have a son. And at the time, the son was like four years old when the father went in on a 13-year sentence. So at the end of the day, during his incarceration, you know, they broke up. Like a lot of people do after five years, most relationships in prison end. That's just what it is. That's fact. But, you know, they broke up, but she still wanted to make sure that uh, the son knew the father. So she would take him to visit. She would accept phone calls from him, even though she had moved on with her life and found someone else that loved her and cared for her and even cared for her son. But still, she would allow him to call talk to his son, not to her, even though he would try from time to time. And she would take him to visit, you know, at least once a month or once every other month to see her, to see his father at the prison and all this and that. And they would have a good time. And the son really loved his father. He did what a lot of kids do when they go see a father that is incarcerated. They get to know the visitation daddy or they get to know the phone call daddy the one that puts on its, its best face in front of the kids for those eight hours or the 30 minutes on the phone, giving the best advice that they can give and so on and so forth, right? But deep down, it's still some other things going on with them, right? So anyway, after 13 years of this, this relationship type of thing, after 13 years, the father gets out. And when he gets out, the son wants to be uh, close to his pops. You know, his pops is having, initially, when he got out, he had to stay at a halfway house. For those of you that don't know, a halfway house is where they want you to go, usually when you don't have anywhere to go, or they want you to be slowly reacclimated back into society, right? Sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes that's a bad thing. It is what it is. It, it really is based on the individual and the particular halfway house that you go to. But the father, he had to go to this halfway house, and the son wanted desperately to spend time with his pops. So, you know, uh, he's a senior in high school after he, well, junior, going to be a senior. He gets out of school. He's going down there every day. He's spending time with his pops whenever his pops is not working and all of these things. But the mother, she sees some things that remind her of the old father. And she tells her son, she says, look, you've always wanted this relationship with your pops and that's fine. But, He's not the person that you think he is. He's a very selfish, manipulative individual. But the son just didn't want to hear that because you got to remember those eight hour visits that he was having with his father. He's seeing this person that's smart, that really cares for him, that's paying attention to him, that's giving him advice. You're right. He's seeing that person. That's the person that he remembers. That's who he knows. The father on the phone that's always telling him that he loves him, that he's got his best interests at heart. That's what he knows about his father. He doesn't know what the mother knew before 
uh, he went to prison or before he was even born. He doesn't know that person, but the mother, she sees these signs of him trying to be manipulative, knowing that she's with another man, even though she wasn't married, trying to get at her, consistently trying to get out her, trying to get her to violate her morals, her values, so that he can get him some, trying to get her to give him money. Because he's complaining about not wanting to go to work, trying to create scenarios where if he quits, it makes sense. You understand? She sees all of the old signs that he exhibited before he went to prison. And she's trying to let her son know, be careful. But the son doesn't want to hear that. So at the end of the day, what happens is this. The father gets an apartment. He's fortunate enough, he's saved up enough money. He's been at the halfway house for his 90 days minimum. He saves up enough money. They help him get an apartment. And the son wants to move in with the father. The mother is totally against it. The man that she's been with is talking to her son. He's telling him that, look, you don't have to do this. You can stay here. You can go see him as much as you want. But he is starting to rebel against this man that has been in his life for 12 or 13 years that he knows that loves him, but he's starting to rebel against him because now his biological father is out. And his biological father is manipulating his mind, making him believe that he knows what's best for him better than the people that have taken care of him his whole life. And the son falls for it. So he moves in. They don't stop him. They don't stop him because they feel like the mother especially feels like, okay, let him go. And he's going to find out on his own what his father is really about. So she lets him go. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Big mistake. It wasn't long before. Now, keep in mind, they're out of school right now. So he can get him a little summer job and help you know, pay, his, pay, pay bills around the house and so on and so forth. You know, those types of things. So his father convinces him to get a job while he's got a job. So you got two checks coming into the house. They're doing okay. But then the father misses a day of work here, misses a day of work there, two days here, three, three days here. Before you know it, the father gets fired. The son is still working. He's still working because he's developed a work ethic being raised by his mother and her uh, boyfriend, which I'll say his stepfather, for 13 years. He's developed a work ethic watching them. You feel what I'm saying? So he understands the value of a dog, but he loves his daddy. So his daddy now is biological. He's saying, OK, you know, we're going to have to do something about the bills. The bills are going to get. You know what I'm saying? Out of hand because we got one check coming in now. So the son listening to his father and believing that his father is this intelligent person. He goes for whatever his father saying. His father said, look, I'm going to go back and talk to some people and I'm going to come up with a way that we can get us some money real fast. Get ahead in the game and then, you know, we can move on with this and then Blase skip it. And trying to make it sound really good is what happens when you uh, deal with somebody in the street. They paint a picture that's all rosy, but it's really not. They don't tell you about the thorns on the rose. You understand what I'm saying? So here's what happened. The son is working where? At a convenience store. Doing good. Now he's working double shifts. The people at the place, they love him. Everything is fine. But the father, he's talking to some people in the streets and all this and that. And they tell him, look, (laughs) You know, they take the money bag to the bank on Thursday nights after five. So he tells his son, he said, he starts to ask his son, what's going on when uh, they come in there on Thursdays? And and the son is not thinking nefariously. So he tells the father, yeah, when they come in on Thursday afternoon, the owner comes there. You know what I'm saying? She gets the bag, takes the bag, you know, get all the money, all the receipts and all of the kind of stuff like that. Right. For that afternoon. And they take it to the bank. So now keep in mind, uh, on Monday, Tuesday, well, let me let me take that back. Let me take that back. From Friday, you got Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, right? Those days right there. Once a month, they count, they wait the whole week and take it in on Thursdays. 
The other three weeks out of the month, they do it every three or four days. So this money has built up in the safe, right? It's built up in the safe. This is back in the day, not today. Like they do stuff today. They probably dropping off every day. So anyway, this money, seven days of receipts and cash has been put in this safe in the back office. So the father convinces the son to rob the place with him and another guy. So it's three of them. So the father estimates that it's these thousands and thousands of dollars in this safe. And the son tells him, no, it's, it can't be that much. It can't be that much. It might be five or six, but it's not that much. But the father says, no, it's got to be seven days. People coming in and out of that store. It's got to be these tens of thousands of dollars in there. Right. And if we can get this, we'll be straight and they won't know you did it. You feel what I'm saying? And then, you know, they might even give you a reward. They, he pimping it. He's pimping it. Now, his son has these doubts because he's been raised by his mother and his stepfather to not do and involve himself in things like this. Right. So he's conflicted. So he goes to his mother and his stepfather. He doesn't tell them what's going on. He just tells them he don't feel comfortable being there. So they tell him to come home. And he's conflicted. He doesn't know what to do. He don't want to tell on his daddy because he thinks his daddy will go back to prison. But he doesn't want to be there anymore. He's starting to see. So when he goes back, his father, he's, he's slick now. He's slick. He in the streets. He in the game now. His father sees that he's acting a little different. So he reassures him, son, it's going to be all right. We just need to take care of this. This one time, that's it. It won't happen again. I just messed up, lost my job. We need to do this so we can move on together. It's me and you against the world. So his son, gullible, but he loves his father. He says, okay. He says, okay, that's what's up. Just one time. His father said, just this one time. He says, okay, we'll do it. He said, but you promised me it's just this one time. His father said, yeah, just this one time. So the day comes. They go up in there. They're robbing the place. The owner comes in. And his father sees her. Because he's standing out front while his son is in the back getting the money out the safe. They trusted him so much he had the combination to the safe. So he gets in the back, and while he got him in the back, he opens up this safe. He brings the, the, the owner into the back of the bank. I mean, excuse me, in the back of the, uh, uh, the, the convenience store. And while she's in the back of the convenience store, not all of them out there. It's, it's the two guys, you know what I'm saying, uh, and the son and the owner. They're all in the back. So... He hands his son a gun and he tells his son, look, man, you said she wasn't going to be here for another hour. You done messed up. He's making his son feel all conflicted. He don't know what to do. This is your fault. You should have made sure that she wasn't going to be here. You said she wouldn't be here until another hour. So the son is panicking. I don't know what happened. I don't know why she's here. And she's standing there looking at him, tears in her eyes, crying. She was like, take the money and leave. I promise you, I won't call the police. Take the money and leave. So the father smacks her. <clears throat> she cries. He hands the son the gun. And he said, you messed this up. You need to take care of this. Now, the son don't realize that this gun has got a hair trigger. You don't have to put much pressure on a hair trigger. He points it at the woman. He's crying. And it goes off. And he hits her. And she falls. And she dies. Now the father grabs the gun. Gets the money and leaves. And he tells his son, look, give us 10 minutes. Call the police. Say that somebody broke in to rob the place and shot the owner. The son does exactly that. These police are not stupid. They're not stupid. They put the son on the side in handcuffs and they tell him, look, we got to straighten some things out and then we'll talk to you. But for the time being, you have to sit right here. Now, they got him handcuffed, so he's panicking. He don't understand. He ain't never been in handcuffs in his life. 
So he's panicking. Then here comes this, um, what you would call him a CSI person. But they do, they get all the fingerprinting and all of this is done, right? So what they do, they come and they take and swab his hands with these, these like napkin thing, whatever it is, right? But it's basically to detect gunpowder residue from a gun and see if you fired a gun recently. And guess what? It was positive. He had gunpowder residue. This test popped positive. It showed it. Then they told him to take off the shirt that he had on. They tested it. <laughs> It was positive. So they started asking him questions in a more aggressive way. What happened here? Explain what's going on. Why do you have gunpowder residue on your hand and you saying you don't know what happened? And check this out, y'all. He didn't have no gloves. So this same tech is doing the fingerprint on the safe now. He knows he's through. They get the fingerprints. They said, well, it's going to take a minute to run them, but he's never been in the system, so his fingerprints won't pop up. So they take him down. Once they fingerprint him and put it in the system, pop, 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 it's him. He was the last one at the safe. The last one at the safe. Now his father and the other dude, they get away scot-free. It was $8,000. They get away scot-free. Now, his son is sitting in jail. His father has the audacity to go visit him. Tell him, keep your mouth shut. I'm going to get your lawyer. Everything going to work out. I'm going to put some money on your books. Everything is going to be just fine. So the son is panicking. He's never been in jail. His mother and stepfather come down there to see him. They're talking to him. They're like, tell us what happened. He's scared. He don't want to tell them what happened because he did it. But he only did it at the, insistence, at the insistence of his father. He don't know what to do. So he don't say nothing. His mother knows something is off. His mother knows that his dad is somehow connected to this. So she confronts him. Her and the stepdad, they confront him. He come back all gangster with it. Look here. I don't know what he got going on. If he did it, he did it. But I'm going to be there for him. I'm going to get a lawyer. I'm going to do all that old kind of talk. But don't y'all come around here no more talking about nothing to me about that. I wasn't there. So she knows then that he's lying. She remember all the telltale signs he has. The eyes blinking. The nose sweating. She remembers all of that. So she calls the police. And she tells them, look, something is off here. My son has never been in any trouble. So she tells him about his father. They run him. They find out that he was recently fired. They find out all of these things about him, but they don't have anything to connect him to the crime or the other person that was with him. They don't even have a clue that somebody else was with him. So guess what? His father does what all people that don't want to change their lives do. He committed another crime. But this time he got caught. And in exchange for a lighter sentence, he turned in the gun that his son used because he told him to, to kill somebody. And he testified against his son, y'all. Testified against his own son. And his son got life in the penitentiary. Yeah. And he got 18 years for what he had done at 30%. So when I met his son and he was telling me this story that I'm telling y'all, I said, you have to tell them, man. You have to. He said, man, if I tell them, then everybody going to think I'm a, I'm a snitch. I said, no, nah, they ain't. Ain't nobody going to think you no snitch. Your daddy did that to you. Your daddy did that to you, man. And he wouldn't say a word, y'all. He wouldn't say, this boy ain't never been in no trouble. Never been in no trouble. But he got caught up because his daddy wasn't worth a crap. And then his daddy put him in a situation, messed his mind up, and put him in a situation where he actually killed somebody. And then he ended up testifying and putting him in prison for the rest of his life. 
Now, thank goodness there is a silver lining to this. Thank goodness that juveniles, if you were under 18, they've changed their life sentence to where he'll have to do 25 instead of 51. So he'll be straight as far as that goes. You got to pay for what he did, y'all. But I just wanted to drop that on you because you got to remember some people, even if they are your parent, they better watch. If they haven't changed, if they haven't changed, look here, trust me when I say anybody can get it. Anybody can get it, y'all, from these type of people. So you got to be careful out there. Just wanted to drop that one on y'all, right? This has been another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker, and I say peace, y'all.